Welcome back to part two. We're about to uh, start where we left off here. Um, let's go ahead and click on the configuration page for the Disable Comments plugin. Now, uh, this is actually used depending on what you want to do with the site. I disable comments on these lead sites because it's not a blog. Even though it's going to have a blog um, where I, I you know, update new content, I don't want people leaving comments. Um, it's just more upkeep, more things to look at and approve. And really the comments are only used by marketers that want a free backlink. So let's go ahead and skip that and just, just disable all comments everywhere. And it'll also lighten up the load on WordPress because um, it'll get rid of unnecessary code. So that's one thing. All right, I'm going to go ahead and install Oxygen Builder and my accordion plugin and um, there's another plugin I want to get as well and I'll be right back okay I got accordion installed and I just installed oxygen builder and this is a default screen you're gonna see when you install oxygen builder okay now what we're gonna do you can actually do a pre-made site um, you can browse a library default install I don't recommend that um, because what I'm gonna show you is how to do your own custom install so I'm gonna go with a blank installation and we'll just make something custom all right now as soon as you activate that oxygen builder and install the uh, blank uh, installation you go to your front page you hit refresh and it's going to be down to the bare basics you'll see the default uh, wordpress posts there all right and nothing else because you haven't done anything with it yet so that's one thing about Oxygen Builder is if, if you got a live website, you need to have some downtime with a, uh, you know, under maintenance uh, plug-in going on because this is what will happen because you don't have anything set up just yet. That's one thing I don't like about Oxygen Builder. I wish that you can, you know, create uh, everything in a, you know, sandbox mode and then just push it to the live site. Um, maybe they'll get that going in the future, but for now, this is what you're dealing with. All right, so now another plugin I like to have, and it's just for marketing purposes, just for keeping track of things. Type in user online, this will come up WP user online. I've been using this for years, and it's very handy, and I'll show you why. All right, once you install user online, you go up here to the dashboard and see the, the click out here, go to WP user online. And you'll be able to see who's currently on your website in, in real time. Now, right now, you can see it's just me. Um, and that's that. Now, if you go to the home page, go to your dashboard home, you'll see it adds this to your home. So it's very useful in tracking. And, uh, you know, you'll see why after, after you give it a try. Um, it'll tell you how many users were ever online and what date and what time. And you can actually you know go back to that date and time in your Google Analytics your webmaster tools and you'll be able to you know see what made people come online at that time um, and what's working for your marketing so that's something I do all right um, now I'm gonna show you some simple things I like to do here there's some plugins that I installed, I'm going to show you why. Now we're going to go to Forms, which is your Gravity Forms. And it's going to um, it want you to add a new form. So uh, now if you didn't activate it, then you got to activate it. Um, otherwise, you won't see this. You're going to need to put your license in and, and go from there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, for form title, get offer. It's going to be a generic title for a generic form. And we're going to go ahead and add some basic types. Now you can actually use the advanced fields, fields and put name, you know, address, all this stuff. But I don't like to do that because for layout purposes, I want to control the design a little bit more. So I'm going to put single line, single line. And what that's going to be is first name, last name. I'm going to show you in a minute. And then I go to advanced fields. And that's where I put the email address and phone number. And it's because that these validate as email and phone number. If they're not, you know, phone numbers or emails that get put in there, it's going to reject them. 
and it's going to give an error you know as to why all right so i'm also going to put in more standard fields and we're going to do single line uh it's not clicking all right we got one there no we don't okay we got one so let's add two so we got two more single lines what this is going to be is uh, property address plus zip code and asking price all right so let's go ahead and configure these let's just click on that and expand it field label will be first name and I'm gonna make that a required uh, item if they if they don't put that in there they're gonna see an error and you don't have to do anything with placeholder now the reason why I added a, uh, a gravity forms custom CSS selector uh, plugin is because even though you can just input it here it's just easier it's a you know efficiency you just click this and it gives you the options so you select two columns you got left half all right because what we're you're gonna see the final uh, what it looks like when it's done but this is what it adds to here you can just type that in and then you could do one for you know GF underscore right underscore half and it'll be the other side um, but I go ahead and use that feature and it's just it, it just it's more efficient that way and takes some time off my uh, development okay so we're gonna type in last name we're gonna make it a required uh, field we're gonna do the exact same thing but for the right half all right we're gonna go ahead and reduce that you got email required because I want at least the email now some people skip the the phone requirement because not everybody likes talking on the phone I require it why not so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now you're gonna see that I'm gonna do the email left half and phone is going to be the right half all right and this like I said is a reason for this in the front end when you see the final uh, output now the property address uh, plus zip there's a reason why I do it it keeps it short like that um, obviously you need to know that so go ahead and do that left half definitely and asking price all right now I'm not gonna do required I don't care if they don't put that in there I can get it from them on the phone um, or one of my uh, acquisitions people can do that so right half BAM so we got our form We've got first name, last name, email, phone, property address with zip code so you know where, it, where it's at. Um, and then you got your asking price. You're going to hit update. All right. And what you get is a form. Okay. Now you saw that I installed the styles and layouts for Gravity Forms. And this specific plugin, because I've tried the other ones, they kind of suck. So what we're going to do is click that while we're under the actual form and we're going to get this uh, little editing area select styles and layouts for gravity forms and you see left half right half left half right half left half right half that's how it makes it look in the front end too so that's why I do that um, first thing I'm going to do is change the submit button and we're going to do center alignment um, I'm going to change the button color, the hover color, like when you hover over it, what's it going to change to. Font style, I always make bold and italic so that it looks like, hey, push me, you know what I mean? Um, so there's that. Uh, font size, go ahead and do the, the suggested 24 pics, see what it looks like. That's what it looks like as 24 pixels. I'm going to go ahead and make that even grander because I want it to stand out. So let's try 36. All right, and it's going to go that big no matter what device you're using. 
All right, if we're going to change the width to 100%. And we're going to go ahead and uh, transfer that to every device as well. All right, so the background of this form is actually going to be uh, a blue color. Um, I'm using the University of Delaware team colors. I find that using team colors for a locality helps to convert the leads because it you know resonates with the locals. So we're going to use a um, a team out in that direction, uh, particularly a men's lacrosse team. So we're going to go ahead and get those colors. I imported an image. Um, into html-color-codes.info and you're going to be able to upload a logo or whatever and find out what hex color that image is. So we've got the blue, you click on blue and it comes up with that color. Now if we click on yellow, we're going to get this hex color, we're going to select the entire thing and we're going to go back to the custom colors and for the button uh, background let's see where is the background button color we're going to go ahead and paste and then we're going to deselect it and bam we got that color and I'm gonna just keep the black on there now hover has to be a little bit different I don't want it to blend with the background that we're going to use so we're going to just go ahead and input the exact same color and then let it deselect, click on it again after it reloads here. And we're going to just drag it a little bit off color so that it's the same color but a little bit different. So what you're going to see is when you hover over it, it changes just slightly the color. All right? Now it's going to do a better job of it in the front end. But if you don't like the color that it changes to, you can go ahead and just modify it. You can give it a little bit deeper deeper color there and uh, let's see the result bam okay so that's a good change and I like how it is now there's one thing I want to add is I'm gonna give it a little padding because I, I want it to be more you know stand out so let's go ahead and give it a top padding uh, no that's too much let's go with 10 and we'll go with the bottom padding of 10 okay that's automatically you know 10 pixels top bottom publish we're going to publish that so now we can exit out of the uh the form css settings in the top left corner and you get back there now you're ready to actually start working on the design so i'm going to go to oxygen templates now, there's certain advanced ways to actually make things more dynamic, um, but I'm going to make everything dynamic that needs to be dynamic uh, for, for the purposes of this tutorial, assuming that you're not that advanced um, and you're just getting started. So we're going to add a new template. And this template is going to be for pages. We're going to do a different template for posts. So right now, we're just going to set that one to pages, go to singular, select pages and this template will apply to all your pages automatically so I'm gonna go ahead and publish alright now I'm gonna add a new re reusable part this is going to be the footer just hit publish Then I'm going to add a new one and header publish. So now you have footer and header templates. So when you update the footer and header and then include them in the actual uh, template for the page, that page is going to show the new header or footer throughout the website on pages. Now, if you have those headers and footers included on the posts template that I'm going to do as well and I usually do that 
um, then that'll show up as well across the entire website. So that's that's a good thing. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna edit pages, just really quick. Um, we're not gonna actually work with these right away. We're just gonna edit with oxygen. Now that we have our reusable parts, and you're gonna see it's gonna load up pretty quickly. Not too quickly, but quickly enough. All right, now we're previewing the sample page. That is what we see, it's nothing. We're going to add, we're gonna scroll down and it's a little off the screen, I apologize, but you scroll down to reusable and you'll see there's header and I'm gonna make it single. There's a header there, you can't see it, but it's there. And I'm gonna click add, go to basics, scroll down, inner content. Now it's showing what's on the page that's on that basic WordPress install page. I'm gonna click add. I'm gonna scroll back down all the way to the bottom to reusable. I'm gonna click footer, single. So you see what I did right there is I added the header, added the inner content, and then added the footer. So I'm just going to go ahead and click up here on save. And then I'm going to go back to WP, go to admin, and get back out of here. I don't need to do anything else with this. So in the next part, we're going to start modifying a uh, template, and we're going to start with the header. And I'll show you how to do that. All right? And make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit that bell notification, and be on the lookout for the next part. Thank you.